person that just, you know, I'm going to get it and I'm going to do it no matter, and those are people out there and I applaud them, but that's not most of us, you know, you don't just turn off that switch and all of a sudden, here I am to save the day, but you, you are to, you know, people do it, and I'm not taking anything away, I said this to somebody the other day, he said, well, I stopped on a dime, I just heard, okay, great, you know, but that's not the norm, you are the exception and I applaud you, but it's not the norm and it wasn't the norm for me. I was a meat eater, just like I was brought up like my family. You know, we had ham hocks in the greens. I make them here now, but we had ham hocks in the greens, and you know, we had ribs. And, but the big difference there, though, was I'm supposed to have that microphone on, but it wasn't. But that's okay. No, because Dana doesn't have time to hook me up, and so you can't hear me. Can you hear me? Get closer. These people don't mind being closer. Get closer. <laughs> And tell them to hold it down over there as much as you can because I don't have the mic on. I'm sorry, everybody. We're getting it together. When I start doing the lives on my subscription channel, though, I'm going to have it all peacefully quiet. We won't be here at the restaurant. Actually, we decided to do this on Tuesdays because it was such a slow day. Ha, ha, ha. Where they say man makes plans and God laughs. So all of a sudden, we got full <laughs> restaurant with tons of people. And normally, there's nobody here. And the lady that uh, helps me out with all of this, she's waiting on customers. Anyway, we're going to get this. Uh, so what was I saying? Um, um, about that you, that you eat meat. 
Oh, is that at one time I ate meat, yeah. And then I learned some stuff and I went from being a carnivore to a vegetarian. And then I went from being a vegetarian, I learned more, to being a vegan, plant-based. And then I met Dr. Wigmore and I went raw. So you see, I allowed myself bridges along the way, which is part of the reason I think it's lasted for me so long, over 50 years now. Because I crossed the bridges, I just didn't... And you can do it that way. But you see, by giving you that impression, the people that do, then you think something's wrong with you, that you can't get it, you know? And then it's up for never, I'll never be able to do this, you know, because I can't be like that person. Well, I know most of the people who claim to, there's some backward steps along the way, but we'll leave it at that. So I'm saying, I'm going to give you some information today that hopefully will sit on you in the right way because. I think we all intuitively know what's right for us. We're born knowing how to take care of ourselves. These little cells were programmed before they got here. So they know what they're supposed to do. And then they get here to this crazy world, and it's like, no, 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 get away, don't do this, don't touch that, don't eat this. Let me give you some plastic and some fake stuff and whatever and some dead animals. And, and you grow up believing that this is the way to eat. Your mother, your grandmother, because they were taught the same thing. So what I like to do is not lead you to feeling that there's a perfection, because I think all along the way it's a journey of learning. You're going to get what you need to learn, you're going to get what you, as I got what I needed to learn. I think that there's a vibration out there for all of us to tap into. It depends on how much we want to go into, how much we want to listen, and how many more lessons we decide we want to learn <laughs> before we get it, you know? Because the lessons will keep coming until we address it become a victor over it instead of a victim, and then we move on to the next thing of what life is going to throw our way. It's just part of being alive. And you're going to have the trials and tribulations. So to think that you're going to hear one lecture, one seminar on your food, and all of a sudden, I'm done. I'm never eating that again. <laughs> you know, I, it, it's, it's, it's a little unrealistic. It's like you don't listen to one lecture on law, and all of a sudden you're a lawyer. You know, or one on math, and you're a mathematician. Maybe you were born with some gifts, but there is a process to change. And we are brought up in a very crazy process. And this process doesn't really serve us. It's convenient, and it's easy. And one of the things I teach is we are literally dying for convenience, literally. Everything has to be so convenient that we barely have to move. There's a commercial on TV now. We only have to bend over to tie your shoes. You just slide. <laughs> you don't have to bend over. You don't have to tie. You I mean, what are you left to do? I'll tell you, be on that phone. Yes. You're left to be on that phone with your brain being slowly programmed in a direction so foreign to how we were intended to habitate this planet. I think I'm getting the mic folks. <laughs> you see, I, like I said, we were having these on Tuesdays because it was empty, and she had nothing to do. <laughs> now, she's got to work over there, help me, and um, by the way, anyway, so no complaining. It's all in the body order, right? It all happens the way it's supposed to. So, what I'm all about is just tapping into a different thought process. And the other conclusion I came to the other day is, this is how you don't grow old. I know I'm a rock Buddhist. I know I'm a this, I'm a that. I'm a big smoker, do drugs, blah, blah, blah. I detox four or five times a day. But you know what my biggest youthing factor that I have is? I'm always open to taking something new and different and take a chance. Believe me, coming out here at 77, opening up this restaurant, you know, I just, I just, was I crazy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because restaurant business is difficult for somebody in their 30s and 40s. My husband's 80. And I'm 77. But you see, I'm open to the idea of being alive and you take, you take a risk. You do something different or you open yourselves up to continue to march through life. You know, at one time, there's no such thing as retirement. That's all modern society. You didn't retire. 
You know, you just want. So we're kind of programmed for birth. This is what's going to happen at this age, and this is what's going to happen at this age, and this is what. And they program you, and then they're programming you on your TVs, and now they can program you with you carrying yourself, carrying it in their pocket. You know, you don't need purse and pocket. You are programmed about everything. So you're not being taught to think. You're not being taught to think outside. You're not being taught to be in touch with you and the people around you. Because we are systematically being separated from each other too. Oh my God, I can't touch you. You may make me sick. Uh-uh. It's what I ate and did that made me sick. I'm here to tell you. We've been trained to believe that we aren't responsible for anything. Yeah, everybody in my family got cancer. I'm going to get it too. Everybody in my family. You are responsible for everything happening to you. Yes, they're predisposed weaknesses and strengths. But we don't have to fall into them. And the easiest way to fall into them is falling into this matrix of what they tell you how life is and supposed to be. That's all I'm about. I'm not about a right or a wrong or a good or a bad or a yes or a no or my way or the highway. It's just opening up to something new and different. And this is how you stay youthful too. You're going to trip and fall doing that, but you're going to also jump to some heights doing that. And that's what life is. It's, that's what it's all about. So I just want to give you some new thought patterns, and some of you already know this, and we're going to delve into other things too. A lot of you already know this. I mean, it's everywhere on the internet. It's everywhere. I mean, vegan, how do you should eat? There's, you know, they'll tell you about the cows and the this and the that, and how does it register with you? And you're thinking about it, some of you. You know, you're trying it, you know, to see how it feels, maybe. But, you know, I'm not ready to give up my meat. Well, here's what I say. Have the intention that you want to make a change, but don't say where you're going. Unless you are fully challenged, say you have been diagnosed with cancer, or diabetes, or a major challenge of some kind, then you got to stop on a dime from what I know to turn it around. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, I have no medical or any kind of nutritional background. I just have 50 years of living this life and working with thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people over the years. And working with some of the best teachers on the planet and seeing their work and what they do. It's all over now, you can pick it up. But why do you want to do it? What, what makes it resonate? Yeah, I love the cows. Yeah, that's a good story. But as I'm passing, whatever, you know, you forget about the story. You, know, you see the little pig on the thing, and then as you pass, cars and ribs, the pig is the thing, the baby, cute pig, the thing. Like that. So, how do we tap into this in a way for those of you who aren't, I'm going to stop on a diet, I'm just going to do this because this is the right thing to do. And I have to tell you, a lot of these people that I see have done this, a lot of these young people, God bless them, they're getting more, they have like a million followers, and they're, and then they say, oh, I decided being vegan isn't the right thing, and I need to eat raw meat, or I need to eat this, you know? And I'm not faulting them or saying them right. I don't think there's a right or a wrong. I think there's information, and what information sits right with you when you hear. And then next, how do you implement it into your life? in a way that doesn't feel like, oh my God, I'm going to miss this, this, and this. Well, I have a couple of thoughts about that. One is finding bridges to cross, you know, and I'll do a little commercial for myself. I do classes, and I do a, a nine-day revival, I call it, and that's for people who have been vegan or vegetarian for a while, now they're back, you know, to where they were. But it's also, I call it a revival, because it's, in my world, it's reviving what you already intuitively know. It isn't a natural human instinct to eat dead flesh, folks, I'm telling you. It isn't natural to us to do that. We don't go, oh, there's a cow, let me go sink my teeth into it. You know, it's got to be cut up and the head gone and all the organs and the blood and then it's got to be buttered and fried and what. And then you can eat it. But you don't see that cow like a carnivore when you go, oh, there's dinner. You see but you have been marketed into believing that and your soul and your system is so far in the other direction. Your cells have been taking all these dead animal, animals in for a lifetime and they get used to being in there. And they call for more and more. And they're making your body more and more acidic. And the more acidic you get, the more privy you are to having challenges. Cancer loves acid. Most of it, so we're trying to reach this balance of homeostasis, you know, of acid alkaline. 
but 90% of what we're taking in is taking us into that acid market. So, okay, so what's that doing? Well, it's making me old, it's making me tired, being acidic, it's making wrinkles come out on my face. Folks, I do it as much for vanity as I do for health. <laughs> because everything out here shows what's going on in here. And the reason I don't do Botox and surgery and fillers and all these other things, I have nothing against anybody choosing to make that choice. I want you to do, as long as it's legal, what you need to do to keep you comfortable within this soul that you've got to walk around. So if that's going to make you comfortable, do it. I just want to be a living example of what can happen if you don't do it. So there's, you got a choice. Yeah, I got some wrinkles. Somebody wrote on my Instagram. They said, why do you have so many wrinkles? And it was like, no, I'm not using a filter. I'm 77 years old. I haven't had both times. I'm supposed to have a little something, right? <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> but, you know, that's the internet. People love to poke and look and whatever. So the whole point is, we, because I, you know, I, people are going to get upset with me. I didn't come to this to save the animals. To be honest with you, I didn't come to this like so. It's there very big now because it opened up my humanity, but I didn't come to save the animals. And it wasn't a big saving animal back in the 70s or whatever night. I, there was, but I wasn't involved with it, okay? So it wasn't, I came to it because all the women in my family were dying overweight and very young. My mother died at 47, my grandmother at 50, and my great grandmother at 60. So there wasn't this longevity thing going, oh, my grandmother was 100 years old, not in my family. And as the years, they were younger and younger. So I looked at the, what was going on, and I was exceptionally sickly. I had the worst cold. I was sick all the time. I had the worst skin, and I was constipated. I was a very sickly, little skinny child with a double chin, by the way. They used to make fun of me. Oh, look how skinny she is, and she's got a double chin. We're going to talk about all that. So I came to it by, I don't want to die like they did. And I had heard how changing your diet can make a difference didn't know that it was going to keep you from aging at the same rate as everybody else, didn't know that it was going to heal up all this stuff going on in my system. And by the way, just because I've been 100% plant-based and probably 95% raw, 98, every time I open up a restaurant, I get a little crazy. But the beauty of that is I get to remember why I don't do that. Everything changes. And this is the point I want to get across today, too. Every single thing that you put in here affects every single thing about you. Everything you're thinking, how you're acting, how you're reacting, how you're going to feel. Everything you put in here creates what you are. And the craziest thing we do in our world, and people love to do it to me, is, Karen, I've got a sore ear. What do I take? Or, Karen, I'm nauseous. You can't separate the whole thing. And you've been marketed into believing you got this over here and this over here and this down here, and I need a doctor for this and a pill. It's all housed in one thing. Come on. And you think you're going to take that pill for the tooth and it's just going to go right in that tooth and stay there and not, <laughs> and not affect anything else in your body, your liver, your kidneys, your blood, nothing else. It's just going in that little tooth. Or it's going in my nose because I took it from my nose. But you're not awake. You're not thinking. This is what I want to do. I just want you to think. Yes, would I love you to be plant-based a thousand percent? Would I love for you to be raw like me? Because I know the world, what it would be like running into you all the time, you know? It just puts you in a different place. Oh, there's some people, too, that are there. All right, we'll leave that alone. But, but the point is, it's just waking up to a new reality for you. Start with you. Yes, we want the planet. Yes, we want the animals. Yes, we want our mother. But start with you, because that's all you have control over. 2,000%, you have no control over your children. Well, you know, people come in, well, I can't get my kids to eat this. Well, who's doing the grocery shopping? <laughs> <laughs> who's making dinner? Are they? They going out shopping and making dinner for you? <laughs> Nipples or whatever they're cooking? No, you're doing it. Well, I don't That's another story. This is all stuff I'm going to be getting to on my subscription, by the way. Because I got a soapbox for whatever you bring to me. That's what 77 years will do for you, okay? And staying awake for 72, 77 years and continuing to be awake. Not falling asleep. Not giving up. And I don't want to call it giving up because it's not about giving up. It's just like, okay, I've done that. Now I'm just going to play golf all day. Or now I'm just going to watch TV. Or I'm gonna... There's nothing wrong with that. But for me, we moved out here and I did my garden one year and I did something another year. And Jerry and I look at each other. <laughs> it's like, 
I just need personally to feel relevant. I've been given a mission, and I just feel the need to continue. Anyway, you have your mission too, you know it, and maybe it's time to stop, and maybe it's not, I don't know. But one thing is you have to get involved in you first and put all of your attention, your time, your money into you. And then guess what? Everything heals and grows and then you can spread out to help everybody around you. That's why I can help thousands and thousands of people because I'm the most selfish person on the planet. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I know that the only thing I can take care of is me. I can try and bring you along, and generally when I do that, people end up pulling me backwards because I'm not coming from my place of strength. And you all have that ability too. So I'm going to say some things today, and hopefully some of them will stick and you'll want to give it a try. Hopefully I'm going to talk about all my classes. You may want to jump in on the class. The classes will be online. I've been teaching these classes for over 40 years now. And it's a mixture of what I've learned. It's a mixture of what I learned when I'm uh, going to my, uh, Asia with my husband regularly, and mostly what I learned from Dr. Wigmore and Victor, and mostly what I've done for the past 45, 50 years. Because here's the other little clue, kids. And it's harder today than it was yesterday. Because we, hear, we read about something, we hear about something, and it's great. It's in my brain, so I got it. But you've taken no action around what's in your brain. You can regurgitate it and talk about it with people forever, but have you set up your home, your life, so that you're living it daily? That's the big thing, is making it practical to keep it practical. I'm going to give you a real quick example. So someone told me about a month ago, I was walking along, and they said, Karen, you know you look young, you act young, but you're walking like an old lady. I was like, all you have to do is say something to me once. <laughs> Just once. You should see the crusade I've been on. <laughs> you should see the crusade I've been on. I have one of those little back stretches. It's by my bed after my husband goes to sleep. I put it there. I sleep with it on the hood. I'm sleeping. I have an R keys. I'm on it every day again. Um, I'm looking in there every time I walk by, you know. And so I decided to get a brace just to wear around under my clothes. So I ordered one online. I, 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 Oh, and I should add, there's a reason for this. I broke this shoulder six years ago. I have uh, a prosthesis in it. I broke it in 17 places. And I have a prosthesis in it. So I couldn't lift my arm any higher than this. And then a month later, I broke this shoulder, and there's a claw in it. So that's what I, so I'm sure that's adding to me stooping over, too. I've got these things pulling in. And then add to that, I haven't danced in five or six years since I got this, you know, I was ballet all day, every day, and I used to say, well, I don't look old because of my posture, you know, well, I'm like, <laughs> around like an old lady, say, yeah, I'm 77, oh, you know. <laughs> so, I said, so I ordered these braces, I ordered one from here, one from there. I tried one on last night, I couldn't figure it out. Jerry couldn't figure it out. Jerry can't even put the brace on the dog. I mean, the dog on the dog. I'm trying to figure out how to put this thing on me. Neither one of us could do it. So then I, I, I just put it, I said, I'll take it back. And then I, another one was delivered. And I put it on, and I got it on. And this brilliant girl works for me, go me on. There's a young one, two bells. And so they know how to do everything. I gave them, they did it right away. But I have to tell you, it was so much trouble even being shown how to do it. it got the girls up and my back up, it was perfect. But what it took to put it on, and what it was going to take, I'm not going to do it. You see the point? So we can hear something good, but you have to set it up. So I'm going to do more of this over there. I'm going back to ballet soon as all this stabilizes. But I know I'm not going to use a brace. You know? And so, you know, it's like when I got my first juicer, you know, the champion juicer 50 years ago. I bought it and it just sat there in a box, you know. But then I finally figured out I have the kids juice. You know, you find out a way to make it happen. This is what I'm saying you have to do. So you're gonna hear some great stuff, but you gotta find a way to make it happen. That's the point. And you, uh, you're gonna go some backward steps, that's part of the process, but you gotta find a way to make it happen. So I'm talking about the meat. It's, it's terrible. We're not uh, designed to eat it. There's some pepper or something wrong. Put somebody else in the <coughs> No, pepper. No? <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Huh. But that's a good thing. That means you're detoxing your soup. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, there's nothing coming out. It's just cut I smell pepper. 
I'm in a restaurant. <laughs> kind of natural, right? I'm a natural restaurant too, right? By the way, you know what I use for pepper? I personally don't use pepper. These are the little tips you'll get on my subscription channel. What I do is I love papaya, and I save the seeds from papaya, and I dehydrate the seeds. I put them in a pepper mill. That's what you see in my pepper mills over here, and I use it like pepper. It gives you that little flavor like pepper, but it's also a digestive aid to help you digest your food. Tips and tricks you'll get on my subscription coming up, folks. Uh, stuff I've been doing and learned to keep this in balance for 50 years. Because it hasn't been a cakewalk, no, but it's setting the juice. So let's get back to the meat. It's just not necessary for us to eat it. And I had a guy in here the other day, and he said, well, I'm still eating this because I have to get my protein, you know. Well, you know what? You're not supposed to have that kind of protein. One in two people in our lifetime will have cancer. That's every other person you know. When I used to treat four years ago, it was one in ten, and it was one in four, and now it's every other person. You know, everybody here knows somebody. Who, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an epidemic. It's a real epidemic, but because they manage it, it's okay. Um, and I'm not saying who they is. I'm just saying it's managed, and you're bro programmed, and you're listening, and you're going to do what they say. You know, you're going to go get the mammogram, and you're going to do this, and I'm not telling anybody not to. You know, but. After my mother died, they told me I should get a mammogram four times a year. And I don't want anybody to stop getting them because of this. I'm just giving you my story. I'm not a doctor. It's anecdotal. And they told me that I should get them three, four times a year because cancer ran in the family. And my little brain said, hmm, if I nuke my breast four times a year, radiated, that soft tissue is probably going to end up with something. So I chose not to do it, and I knew it. But I'm not saying that's for anybody else. It's just, but that's what the awake thinking will get you. You'll just start to think things through. You don't have to listen to me or do it my way. You just start, and a big way is to give up the dead animals because that's weighing you down. It's weighing your brain. It's weighing your thought process. You're carrying the karma. I know you don't have to care about the cute little pig anymore or whatever, but his karma is still there. It's part of the vibration of this world. And you're taking that in and you're making that a part of you. Because every apple or banana you eat becomes a piece of you. And every dead animal you eat, it becomes a piece of you. How do you think you go from this is the baby to the size you are? It's everything you eat that's creating it. How you grow this way, how you grow this way, it's all the food that you're eating. Nothing else. It isn't inherited. <laughs> it's inherited the, the, the habits of your mother and your grandmother and your great grandmother, but it's not inherited. So you wake up and you find differences where you can make a difference in your life. If you're not ready to give it up 100%, say, I'm just going to cry a week or do my nine-day revival. Those are brain flies. And I've been living with them for 40 years. I know they're so annoying. But you know my stuff is fresh, okay? <laughs> you know, we got living stuff here. Anyway, um, they are annoying, though. And they're so, you know what I learned, though? to do, because I used to, every certain time of the year, they're just everywhere. They hatch and whatever, and they get in your brains and stuff. So now what I do, more tips on my subscription channel, folks. <laughs> now what I do is when I take, when I get flour or seeds, and I put them in the freezer and I freeze them first. Oh. And I'm not getting the grain of so we're not doing that here, obviously. We gotta do anyway, so giving up the dead animals. And now it isn't as difficult as it used to be. You got vegan restaurants everywhere. You can go somewhere, you can order online, well, you, can you can order online, you can order, you can get food everywhere. When I started 50 years ago, nobody was doing it. I mean, I was the crazy lady in Chicago. We had one vegan restaurant and one vegetarian restaurant, which is why I ended up opening up the restaurants, because we just didn't have any here. And I had the second, I opened up the second raw food restaurant in the entire country in Chicago. Everybody thought I was crazy. Nobody came in. People used to walk by the restaurant and go, <laughs> I had gourmet, raw, fresh food. I was all excited, you know. <laughs> People thought I was so crazy. And then I was on Oprah, and then everybody wanted to know what I was doing. Yep. The power of programming in the press, you know. We all, we got to use it too. Anyway, so you might just start with doing my nine day revival or one of my, my even 10 day class, or you might just decide for yourself, you know what? I'm not going to have any dead animals for one week and see if I feel different. Give yourself the option. 
And when you do that, map out every place that you can get food unless you're used to cooking at home all the time. And I do have some cookbooks on Amazon and whatever, and there's YouTube channels, and I have a YouTube channel. Start preparing something for yourself. And give yourself one new life and see how you feel. But pay attention to the good stuff too. Because you do get weaker because you get stronger in some circumstances. And then, of course, I'm going to throw in the chicken, and I'm going to throw in fish, too. I mean, if you have to eat any of the dead animals, the fish is going to be the easiest on your system. But why? You know, it had eyes. It had a mother. It had, you know, I mean, fish are loving animals, too. I'm just saying you don't need them. If you're going to try something new for a week, then just start giving other, everything breath. Because you don't make a goal that's reasonable for yourself and give yourself weekly goals to get to. That's what the classes do. You kind of... Um, pro, and not, you're, you're, you're giving it, you're motivated to you do have something in standard to set for you. So give yourself goals at home. I always give myself goals for everything I'm doing. My life, for me, is like a puzzle. And I'm throwing all these pieces to put into the puzzle, and sometimes it fits right in, and sometimes it takes a minute. So I have to get there. But it will eventually fill in if you're doing right and the right thing and the right thing what you're supposed to be doing. The puzzle. I love my puzzle, you know. I, all of a sudden, I'll get a pillow, and I was going to buy a new pillow, and I'll put this there, and I'm like, oh, that one looks perfect there. Don't, don't you have those little random acts in your life? The puzzle is filling in for you, and you have to learn to trust that it's going to always do that. Anyway, so give up the meat fish and chicken. Try it for a week. And if you really, really, really want to give yourself, go off of dairy, too. In fact, what I would say is go off the dairy because you the chicken and the chicken. Because the dairy is, is even worse and it's harder to maneuver to get around it because it's in everything. Everything. They think, well, they know that salt, fat, and sugar is part of the human condition. This is what we're supposed to have. So they know if they're going to put some salt, fat, and sugar, they know you're going to get addicted and keep coming back for it. So that's why you can get a beautiful salad. What kind of protein do you want? You throw in the chicken. I'm saying get that salad without the protein. I, I promise you, you're not going to be protein deprived. <laughs> in fact, there's protein in just about everything, even potatoes. They have 12 grams of protein in it. It just isn't marketed to you. I haven't had animal protein in over 50 years. There are entire societies that don't do that. There are entire countries. So why is it in America, where we have the largest of obesity and disease and everything else, you got to have meat? I'm going to tell you something. And we got more gyms than any place on the planet. <laughs> and everybody's walking around in workout clothes. Yeah. And nobody's working out. And they don't look like they're working out either. What about all the dialysis? Uh, that dialysis, you know, I was talking to somebody about that the other day because it's like a horror movie. You didn't see that when I was growing up. On every other corner, they're dia I mean, yeah. and they're weird. It's like a horror movie. They wheel the people in, and everybody acts like it's normal. Everybody acts like it's normal because you're being marketed. And it's just all happening before you. They got a new commercial on TV. I heard it this morning, and I've heard it several times. I can't give you the exact letters, but I thought, have you got MDA or something? Have you ever me some letters that you've never heard of before? But you're programming you to start, and then you're going to go to your doctor and go, have I got an MDA? And you don't even know what it is. <laughs> and the rep has already given them the prescription for it to sell it to you or give you the free sample. I mean, you're being medicated and marketed, and, it's just, and you wonder why you don't think for yourself. You wonder why, you know, you're just going to grab that meat and eat it no matter what because everybody else is doing it. It's killing you. You're going to drink that dairy. It's literally my world killing you in more ways than one. And the cow secretions, you know, they give the animals growth hormones, steroids, and antibiotics. And the lactating animal, the chemicals go right there. So you're going to have triple doses when you do the dairy. You wonder why your children are sick and overweight and tired. I mean, you're literally feeding them poison. Literally because you've been told to do it. You've been told all these little things to make your life easier. Microwave your food. Really, you couldn't tell me to own the microwave. You're radiating your food. Radiation causes cancer. You open the door. Well, they say they're safe. Who are they? They're selling it to you. The people who make it 
they're somewhere. And I just, I, I'm all covered up with my knee protein. I can't think for myself, just give it to them. Give me all the negativity you can. I'm right here. My neighbor's sick and tired. This one, my family, everybody. So it just feels normal. People say to me, how are you doing, Karen? That I don't know what illness is. I got lots of other problems because you're not going to get through life without something. You got to learn something. But I feel great every day. I wake up automatically at 5.30. I don't need an alarm clock. I wake up. I, I have a whole day. I, and I wake up and I say, you know what? I am so grateful I woke up because a million people didn't. What am I going to do in this world to continue to make my dreams come true and help others? That's my start of my day. And let me be smart enough to keep putting those puzzle pieces in that you're handing. And don't get sidetracked to take them back, take them back. Because that's part of the lesson, too. And recognize it. I just want you to wake up and you'd be surprised at how much you'd wake up. And some of you are already doing it, so then I'm going to get on you about detoxing, okay? But it's important. And even if you're not ready to give it up forever, it's important to give your body a rest. Oh my goodness. I don't have to break down. Do you know it takes anywhere from out months and years to break down dead animals in your system? We don't have a, a small, a, a, we can't get in and get it out like a carnivore. But they can get it in and get it out. They got this much cold. You got five feet in there. And if you don't get it out, which is why you stink. Underarm, bad breath, it's all those rotting animals inside of you. Little pet cemeteries walking around. <laughs> and you wonder why you stink. Why well, when you work out? I mean, people come out, oh, I can't hug you. I've been working out. Well, you can hug me after I work out. I'm not going to stink. And then they get you once again because you're so worried about stinking, so you're going to use all these chemicals to keep yourself from smelling. And let's put a little aluminum and mercury on my arm so I don't stink right next to my breast. More chemicals. I just want you to wait, and I'm not telling you not to do it. I just want you to think and say, okay, that makes sense or it doesn't. Okay, I'm going to find a way to implement this. I'll take her class, I'll do this, I'll make a commitment, I'll do something, I'll find a partner. And just try it for a week and see how it feels. And the next thing that comes to that, though, for me, is detoxing and cleansing my body. And I do it a minimum of four times a year. That's right, four times a year. I don't drink, smoke, or drugs. I'm 95.9% .9 raw. Uh, I don't eat any animals for over 50 years. And I detox four times a year. Why? Because I live in a very hostile world for humans. First of all, I live in this hemisphere, so I'm not in the jungle. Humans, we were created to be in the jungle environment with, with uh, tropical animals. We don't have birds that are all We're supposed to be in the top of the environment. And we, of course, migrate all over this planet. And we kind of lost ourselves because of that, too. You know, the tropical weather comes and everybody wants air conditioning. That's how you've know, reprogrammed your body. I walk around in long sleeves in the summer because I know I'm going to go somewhere with air conditioning. I'm happy when it's 80 degrees. I feel very comfortable and I'm hungry. Seriously. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not going to go and, you know, but I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable in humidity. We're supposed to be, that's staying juicy. People want to move to Arizona and dry out. Really? <laughs> no, a lot of it's juicy. You know what? You get this in my, uh, what do I do? The, the subscription. So my bedroom is quite different from where I used to live downtown in a high rise. I'm in a little house out here. But you know what I've done? I've created a rainforest in my bedroom. Because that's where we're supposed to be, the rainforest. So I have my husband put a shelf over the door. And I have a humidifier in there. And I have plants there, up there, because we're supposed to do the oxygen from the plants. That's something better than for them. Okay. Um, and then I have plants all around the room. Then I have another humidifier over here and another humidifier over there. I live in the jungle in my bedroom. And I have crystals all around, amulets for healing and relax. I go back to the earth. I can't sleep outside like I was intended. I try to bring the earth inside. I cut flowers, beads, and stuff. I keep them in vases in my house instead of I bring the outside inside because that's where the healing is. We are supposed to be in a tropical rainforest. And those of us in Chicago, I mean, that's what you got to do. So, hostile to our environment. 
the air isn't like it was meant to be. When we were created, God's spirit universe created the planet, the oxygen levels were 38%. After the Industrial Revolution, they were down to 22%. We're living in the teens in terms of oxygen in our environment. All cancer cells and all viruses, I don't care what name you give the virus, they're anaerobic. They can't live in an oxygenated environment. So you're not getting it from the air. Unless you're eating 100% or 90% raw like me, you're not getting it from your food. And if you feel the need to wear a mask, you're not getting it from anywhere. It's a scary proposition. You can live without food, you can live without water, but you can't live without breath. And it's slowly being taken away from you. Which is why, another commercial next door in my spa, I have hyperbaric chambers and ozone bathing, which is the third molecule of oxygen. I actually have a hyperbaric chamber in my home for the past 20 years that I get in regularly. All right, it's all about oxygen. Yet food is important, folks, but there's so many more pieces to the puzzle. Exercise is important, folks, but there's so many other pieces to the pieces to the prayer and meditation, the most important, but there are other pieces to it. So it's getting all those balls up in the air at the same time. And some are gonna drop more than others at different times, but it's staying on the process and in the focus. And by doing that, creating little goals for yourself so that you can remember. I've been doing these, how many, how many years have you been coming to my detox, uh, my uh, free information seminars? I She's been coming to my free information classes since 2007. And tonight, to come out here, they travel 25 miles. I know that may seem excessive for some, for some, okay? No. <laughs> They're worth it. Because you see, the thing of it is, that commercial you hear over and over again, you need to find a person or a place or a thing that's going to motivate you and inspire, inspire you and listen to it over and over and over again. Dr. Rigmore was my teacher. I used to follow around. We had video cameras there, the big thing. I, I got some of those. We're going to find them one day and show them up. I used to follow her around with a camera, taking in every single thing she said. Victor, my teacher who lives in Costa Rica, I watched him teach classes for 40 years, and I listened to the same class, but every time he'd say something different, it would hit me a different way. All of a sudden, oh, I woke up to that, the light bulb, and sometimes it, But I immersed myself so much into this of what I had, I had available. I didn't have an internet back then. I couldn't Google something. I actually had to read books and meet people, <laughs> you know, and travel to their seminars and workshops and things. It was a different world. But I immersed myself in it every chance I could. I, brought, I used to do something in my home I called Learn to Live International, and I was a baby and all this. And I'd have people meet in my home in Evanston the third Sunday of every month. I still have some of those people coming around to me too. And we would just meet. I put up, uh, there were only three health food stores in the Golden Care, Sherwin, there were just a few. And I put signs up saying, meet in my home, third Sunday of the month, alternative thinking cooking, non-cooking. So I would put a list of what things people should bring, and then we'd get together and put the food together in my dining room. I lived on the lake there. And then we would talk about health. And I was an authority back then. I don't even do any for two years, but I was an authority. <laughs> but I was working under Dr. Wayne Warren Victor, and she spoke at my home. I spoke at Unity Church. I would bring different people in. And that's how I started all this. I created an environment for myself before the internet. So we met the third Sunday of every month in my home. So there was a goal. I had to be good before they came. I had to be good after they came. And I had to be good think about them. It was only one week I really had to think about on my own about eating right. Do you know what I'm saying? I set up goals for myself. I set up my life where I had to do it in my mind to keep it close to me. I didn't go and hear them speak and go, God, that makes so much sense. Yeah, I'm going to be a vegan one day. And then off to do what I always did. Unless you set the environment up around you, it's going to run away. Because it isn't natural in our world to live naturally. Which is why my bedroom is a rainforest. <laughs> I live in a magical world, folks. Because this world doesn't serve me to, to live and be strong. So I have to create my own. And that's what I'm offering to you, to wake up to create a new reality for yourselves. It doesn't have to be my way or my way. And there's so many roads to the top of the mountain. 
but I would look very carefully at the teacher I choose. Okay? Dr. Wigmore at 87 could do cartwheels. Yes. I was going to listen to every single thing she said and did. All right. Victor can still do full um, whatever and lift himself up almost like he's levitating at 85. And he's in the jungle hacking away and doing whatever. We had a, uh, a uh, retreat there, Johnny Juicer and I, a few years ago. And I'm going to do another one. There will be one here before there, but it was so much fun. We had but anyway, so the people that I chose to learn from, which is why people are always saying, have you read so-and-so, or did you see this video, or did you do that? There's so much out there now, I'm so happy for everybody. But I found my teacher. I found people that took in the whole, even his old things that Victor taught me, people are just learning and coming on and saying, now, did you hear about this? Because I found the right teacher. And I, I couldn't distract myself in so many ways. I found teachers and here's where I go. But you can't do that now. You, know, you got the internet. Every time you open up your phone, if they, they know you want to know something about health, it's going to come up. And there's the distraction because so many people don't even really get things done. They're just taking on all the information. Have you heard this? Have you done that? Do you do this? Have you heard this? Stuff? And this regurgitating that information, but where have you set it up in your life to do it? People come in, oh yeah, I gave talks. Really? You don't look like it. If like you did it maybe 10 years ago. Do you know what I'm saying? It's got to be active. But they did it 10 years ago so they can still talk about it. Not live it. That was my point. I wasn't being mean. My point was practice what you preach first and then teach. There's so many people, oh, I want to do what you do. Well, live 50 years with it. Then you can do it. Live with yourself. Do you first. A hundred percent. Not something you read on the internet or you heard. Live it. Then teach it. I had this beautiful woman years ago in Evanston. Uh, when she was coming to my learning little, she said, you know, Karen, I'm trying to teach raw foods at my class. And she was a little short, very large woman. And she said, nobody will listen to me. Right, because you don't look like you're living it. <laughs> I'm not saying you're not, but put some time in, live it, live it. Know what comes out of your mouth is something that you've lived, not just something you read in a book or heard somebody else tell you is the right thing to do. Live it. And once it's ingrained in your soul and your cells and you know that there's nothing else for you to do, not your ego telling you, well, I'm doing better than you, so let me tell you what to do. That you have no choice but to do this. Then you teach, and that's your teacher. I wouldn't go to a sick, overweight doctor. I wouldn't go to a bald hairdresser. I know they're popular now. I wouldn't go to a makeup artist with a make makeup effect mess. I wouldn't go to a trainer that was overweight or had a tummy. <laughs> I wouldn't go to a stiff yogi. <laughs> and for me at my age, I'm not saying all oh, you wonderful warriors, I wouldn't go to somebody 35 to tell me what to do. But that's because I'm 77 and I've lived a lot longer than that. So that's why it's hard to be, oh, have you heard? Have you seen? No, I'm busy living it. I'm glad you have the information. But don't let it muddle you to the point where it stops you. Don't feel so full of your head and what you know that you'll think you're healthy just because of what you know. <laughs> You've got to implement it. So of course, I think my classes are a wonderful way to go and do it. You know, I've been teaching you for 45 years. And I put you on a little bridge, keep crossing bridges. We get kind of, the 28 day is the most intense. And that's the one people get the most results from. Uh, I'm not able to use my PowerPoint tonight, but I'm probably going to figure out how to do it on the subscription channel when I do it. <laughs> they tell me how to do it. Anyway, so, um, but I show you people that have taken the classes over the years, the dramatic changes. Uh, I believe, like I said, I don't believe mine is the only way, but I believe that I found a successful way to help you find your process in the whole, whatever it is you want to do. And I'm not saying there's a right or a wrong or a yes or a no. You know, uh, one of my dearest friends and angels in my life is a hunter. You know, he and his kids are hunters. And it breaks my heart. But they're the kindest, most wonderful, generous people in the other part of the world. So nobody's going to be 100%. And we don't have to just hang out with our own kind. How do you learn about something else if you're not hanging out with some of the others, too? 
In fact, I don't have a lot of vegan friends. You know why? Because I'm more than food. And when you hang out with vegan people, all you get to do is talk about food and their health. I mean, I shy where they start, and what they ate, where they were telling me all day long. I run into people in the grocery store. They start mouthing off what they ate for the day. It's like, great, I'm glad. You know? <laughs> Unless you're paying me. No. I mean, I step out of my car. It's all about food. But there's so much more to me than that. I, I'm up. I sleep four and a half hours a night. So you think I'm just thinking food all those hours? I read. I play the piano. I, I'm always starting a new project. I have a million projects going in my house. <laughs> you know, I'm always learning new things and putting them into practice, which you'll get pieces of when you visit me in my home. I'll show you all the stuff. I'm, I do a, a ceremony every morning, a sunrise. I mean, I do so many things, and that's what it's all about. Yes, the food is important, but hold up your fist. That's the size of your stomach. It's a tiny little sack in there. It isn't this whole area to fill up four or five times a day, and every time you pass something, you see something, just stick it in your mouth. We're just programmed to just eat, eat, let's feed. People just feed all day long. Feed. And they're feeding more and doing it. Because now you can just sit in front of your computer and push a button and Instacart drops everything off. You don't, I mean, it's amazing. You are dying for convenience. And the amount and the calories and the sugars that you're eating, for somebody living the planet, they wouldn't need it. And you wonder what's going on with your bodies and your health. There's other things in the world too. So best friends of mine, they're hunters. You know, I have all kinds of friends. So start the journey though with yourself. What can you live with to improve your life? Set the intention that this is why you're doing that. Because if you have a job to do, you're going to figure out a process for it. Well, this is your greatest job you'll ever be given. Why wouldn't you put every time, every cent that you earn? I mean, it used to bother me, it doesn't anymore, because I've learned patience at seven. seven. Uh, <laughs> but people, they go, I mean, it's too far to travel, or it's too too much trouble to do this or to make this. I can just get in my car and drive through and the food is handed there and then eat all of these calories, this huge meal, meal, and go home and sit and watch TV and go to sleep. How do you expect that to work? And you could have worked out all morning, but now it's eight, nine o'clock at night and now you're eating. By the way, <laughs> which is one of the worst times to eat, you really learn on the description channel, because we're on the circadian rhythms and if there weren't electricity, you wouldn't be able to eat, right? So God must have intended that when the sun went down, you stopped eating. Because if you're in the jungle, you don't know if you're taking a monkey poo or what you eat. You <laughs> meditate and rest and go to sleep and down. You're not supposed to be eating. And this is what you know, most people eat the most. They may be good all day long. And then sunset, now it's time to shovel it in. And then people that wake up during the night, you know what it is, it's the sugar. Mm -hmm. It puts you back to sleep. Mm -hmm. And the digestion wears you down and tires you. We have a product that I recommend here called Ozonated Magnesium. You do a couple of those before bed, you'll poop like a, you'll sleep like a baby and poop like one in the morning too. <laughs> you don't worry about waking up to eat Ozonated Magnesium. It's on my website. It's amazing. So there are little tips, and, and should you have to depend on it for the rest of your life? Absolutely not. I love for you to get your body in a place where you're like me. I eat and I go to the bathroom. I'm poop 20 minutes after I eat. The last thing I ate comes out for the new to come in and start working. Was it always that way? No. I was the most constipated human being on the planet. I used to make it once a week or once a month. The doctors told my mother that was natural. That you know that's just her system. Really, I'm eating three or four meals and boy, and it's all that's all that's coming out. Plus, I was a skinny little girl, which brings up the double chin that your organs prolapsing from being constipated. The more you learn on the situation, right? <laughs> so, this is, and so I got rid of it. You can change everything. Uh oh, this is on low battery now. Okay, we're not going to worry about it. I'm almost done. Anyway, so I'm just very excited for you. Just huh? 
I'm sorry. How much more time do I have? Okay, we gotta rush this up. I'm gonna tell them really quick. <laughs> Done, thank you. <laughs> anyway, uh, and that's another thing too. Keep laughing. Don't get so serious about your food. If you do decide to do this for a week, don't go to a restaurant and make somebody absolutely crazy to show everybody how well you're treating yourself. You know, that's what the vegan said. No, does it have this, does it have that? And everybody's sitting there starving and hungry. Well, you gotta do this and you gotta do that. And everybody said, well, I don't wanna be like this asshole. You know, I'm like, you need forever. Oh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> what I meant, though. <laughs> but, you know, you know what? So who's gonna listen to you if you're being a jerk about your food? You wanna make it as natural and easy as possible for them. So hard, but you know the egos get in. Well, you know this is I don't eat this and I don't eat that. And make sure it doesn't. Is it hasn't got tofu in it? I'm sitting here 500 pounds and I'm worried about tofu. <laughs> <laughs> Just to prove a point. Just think about you. And if it's tofu, go for it that night. If it's avoiding some meat, go for it. Unless you're raw, then it's not raw. Well. You know, it depends on what stage where you put yourself. So, oh, well, I was talking about, what was that? What were I talking about? Oh, and the, oh, the other class that I teach, oh, all right, here you go. The other class I teach is what's called a sugar break. I call it a sugar break, and you're taking a break from sugar. And this isn't just white sugar, it's all forms of sweet, even down to your sweet fruits. You can do fruits uh, that aren't sweet fruits, like peppers and tomatoes, but your bananas and all your wonderful sweet fruits that we love are a no-no, and why? because we're getting way too much sugar for our systems, and even the natural sugar has taken over to be too much for many of us. So what I propose is we take a break for 10 days from all the sugar. And I'll put it to you this way. I was at a carnivore, and I went to be a vegetarian, and I thought, oh my God, this is wonderful. And I went from being a vegetarian to a vegan, and I thought, really, this is how we're supposed to feel? And I went from being a vegan to a cook to raw, and I thought I could walk on water, and then I gave up all sugar except peppers and tomatoes for six months. First of all, I lost another 10 years on my face, okay, because the glycosins and the sugar are aging you. And I also believe it's hugely responsible for all the dementia and Alzheimer's disease. It's crystallizing your brain, not to mention what it's doing to your sizes and everything. So we do a sugar break. And a real quick story, when I announced it on the incident, this one little girl said, you shouldn't take us off fruit. We're supposed to be fruitarians, which we are. And I know this guy in the jungle, he's been living there, and he climbs the tree every day to get his fruit, and he's 90 years old. I go, but the operative word is he climbed the tree to get the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> he needed that kind of energy. He wasn't sitting behind his computer <laughs> waiting for Instacart to drop it off <laughs> and walk five steps to the door. <laughs> that you slip your feet into, you don't even have to <laughs> put your shoes on anymore. And then you just slide right back. Well, the opera, we're not expending, we don't, we don't need that kind of energy the amounts of sugar. So I teach a sugar break. So you can do any of these classes on your own, you can jump in, but what we're in the process of doing, I'm so excited about this too, is we are going to be putting, that's another subscription, it's not really that, all my classes that I've taught for years online where you will be able to pick and choose which one you want or restart one over again so it will be an ongoing thing. So I'm going to start you with the nine day revival and then you'll do the 10 day vegan class and then you'll do the 28 day and then you'll do the sugar break. So it's kind of like being in a university. And you'll go the whole route and then at the end of that, you know, maybe you've gone back to some of this and you want to do this again or maybe you didn't finish the second week and you'll wait again for the second week to start again. And when I did the classes in person, I, I always had alumni. Many alumni in the classes I had the first time. The, the alumni took over the class, actually, because people <laughs> need to keep trying. I keep working at it, not trying, working at it. Practicing it. And putting it in, you know, doing it. So we're working out a process where you're going to be able to we'll just keep going around. And in between, there'll be some cooking classes and some other stuff in there to go. By the way, I'm doing a big cooking class September 24th and it will be virtual, online, and it will be here, and it's three of us doing it. This incredible woman in Belize, Delilah, she has got an incredible, uh, she's incredible, and so Delilah's doing it with me, 
and Tanji, who is just this incredibly gorgeous, fashionable young woman that you've ever seen, and she teaches fitness. So the three of us are going to get on, and Tanji will be here with me, and Delilah, we can't join in, but we'll be successful on <laughs> TV. I would love to. And we're going to hold this uh, round table with the three of us teaching, so that'll be September 24th. You can come here in person if you choose, or you can do the whole thing online. That's up to you. And I have a series of other cooking classes that I'm going to be doing. So stay tuned. I'm excited to continue to serve you in all the ways I can. So the classes are soon to be online. And you can just uh, pick which, when and where you want to do and how often and where you want to go in. And hopefully that'll work a lot for everybody. So I'm going to open up quickly. I usually talk a lot more than this, but I want to open up to any questions you have. And do you have any questions on here? Can anybody see what they're saying on here? Um, uh, there's a request. You request. Oh, they want to be live with me. Who is that? Can you do that? Do I want to do that? I don't know who it is. I'm sorry. Ask me ahead of time before I do it, and then um, I will bring you on for sure. I promise. Anyway. I'm learning, folks. I have decided that I want you to tackle getting in touch with yourself. I have to tackle getting out of in touch with myself. <laughs> How would we sign up for class? How would you sign up for class? Uh, we're going to have a point. We'll be on my website. I have this incredible young. Oh, I'm helping you. Oh, I'm so excited. What's your website? Uh, the website is Karen, K A R Y N. No, it's Shop Karen's. That's the other one. The website is shopkarens.com. And you can find it on the link tree, I'm told. I have this and, and I've got great, I've got great little human angels around me now. Thank God. Oh, yeah, I'm thanking God. No. <laughs> They're all showing us. Yes, ma'am, you have a question. Um, do you have a brochure with the Do I have a brochure with the classes? You know, I could be slick and say we're trying to get away from paper, which we are, but we will have a brochure. We are creating it. But you can go to the website. Uh, it will be online, and if you get my emails, you'll get that information too. But we will create a brochure so you can see it figure out the classes. In fact, that's starting very soon. This is and the cooking class, what time is The that? cooking classes, oh, that cooking class, I think is at, uh, there will be a link there too. I think that cooking class is at, um, on the 24th, look on the, the phone in front of the book. I should have all this information, I'm sorry. I should have had all that here ready. But you see, this is all new to us out here. And all the people that used to work for me in the city, some of you remember Nancy, my, my sweet Nancy, 17 years with me. I don't think I got all new people and they're all wonderful, but we're all learning together. That's part of the process of life, right? Different chapters. My daughter said to me, she says, Mom, you know, why are you doing this? You know, because we've had some very strong trials here getting this restaurant open and but it's been, it hasn't been easy. And she says, why are you doing this? Why aren't you, you know, in your golden years? And it's because I want to be relevant. And being relevant, you're going to have good and bad. It's part of it, right? A question, yes. What is the name of your product that helps you go to bathroom? Ozonated magnesium. Would you go back to Nicole? Ozonated magnesium. It's called ozonated magnesium. And it's oxygenating your colon and it's very gentle. Uh, I generally tell people if you're con I'm not a doctor and I'm not prescribing. I generally say to people, if you're very constipated, you might start with two and you want to do it a half hour before you go to sleep. And it is a part of the which class? Oh, this is a sugar break. And it is a part of the sugar break too, but this is a product from the day of magnesium. Um, and it's a wonderful product. And most people are deficient in magnesium, not as much calcium anyway. So um, it's a wonderful product. And most of these products are included in the classes that I teach. Any other questions? How much are the classes? How much are the classes? They're all different prices, and it will all be on the internet. I don't get to figure and do all of that. I just get to teach you. And I will have more of that information next time. But you're getting my emails, so you'll, you'll get an email about them, too. Open them up. Uh, digestive, digestive enzymes. This is everything, folks. Um, I live, even though I'm 100% raw, I still do digestive enzymes with my meal because I didn't do it my whole life. 
So here's the deal. If you're eating cooked food, even if it's vegan, plant-based, if you're eating cooked food, your body has to use its store of enzymes to break that food down. So you're basically using up your life force at the table. Every time you have some cooked food, your body has to work to break it down. When you eat raw, the enzymes are there, they're alive, and they break it down for you. And they help. The older you get, the less you have, which is why I do enzymes. I also say for those who want to lose weight, uh, you do before and during uh, your meal, and you will definitely lose weight. Uh, my understanding from Victor, my teacher, there's never been an enzyme overdose on the planet, and nobody's ever died. <laughs> so um, I actually had to stop taking so many because they kind of wake you up and give you energy too. They're like the the catalyst, like the electricity that turns the light on. Uh, so they kind of wake you up. So don't do them too late at night unless you're a student and you need to study all night. Um, but I love my digestive enzymes, and I have two. I have one with probiotics and one regular. Anyway, this is about to close down. If I missed any of your questions, throw them at me on Instagram. Join my subscription. I'm going to have question and answer day. They're trying to talk me into TikTok too. What do you think about that, folks? No, I have I no idea. I have no idea. Why not? But I'm going to learn. Anyway, that's part of the process. But I will be, and I'm going to have days. And I really, I just want to be a part of your lives. I, been out here by myself so long, so let's join together as a community and keep this going, our little world out here. And I will stay around for more questions, but the battery's about to run out. And please, oh, question, you had one? Yeah, what do you say about organic versus not organic? What do I say about organic? You know, in a perfect world, I would eat all organic. But you know what, if I'm someplace and it's not organic or whatever, it doesn't stop me from eating. It's part of the reason I detox four times a year. I buy only organic at my home, but there was a time I could not afford organic, and I eat regular vegetables. And one of the things Dr. Wigmore taught us was you could take your vegetables and put them in the sink, fill the sink with water, and put some uh, wheatgrass in there and absorb the poisons out. I did that for many years. But I've eaten, the one thing I will not touch are berries that are non-organic, especially strawberries, because they use nerve gas to retard the growth. But uh, I say do it if you can, but don't let it stop you from being plant-based if you can't do it. You know, it's the stages of your life. Don't, don't let it stop you if it's not organic, but if you can, go that way. Okay? I'm saying we can't be so tight about anything that it doesn't allow us to continue to move. That's the point I wanted to get across more than anything. We get so... And then you're stuck here like this and you're not going or doing anything except spotting out. Find a way to make it livable, to keep in your life. And remember that if you don't take care of your body, the most magnificent machine on the planet, where are you going to live? Bye. What is your Instagram? Um, uh, K-A-R-Y-N. And this will be up on YouTube, I think, too. K-A-R-Y-N.